The other area that we talked about is rare diseases. Now, there's a lot of ch numbers on this chart, but let me explain what this is. One of the biggest issues that, again, we see you, our clients, having in the area of rare disease is two areas. One, on the development side of things, actually getting protocols that work in the real world is very difficult on rare disease because the markers are so difficult. But then once you have a medicine approved, the one-third from the FDA that I referred to earlier, how do you market it? How do you identify patients? This example is in GI. The prevalence here is around four patients per 100,000 population. And the average misdiagnosis of the four patients is four times. And it's one of those conditions that, if not treated, is fatal. So what we've done in this example is use EMR data, use the over 600 million de-identified patient records that we sit on, combine the two, and place on the predictive algorithms to a control group that we know is diagnosed. And then we've taken that control group to a broader population set. And two things happened. One, we found that the volume of patients that our sponsor in this case thought was actually a lot higher. But the most important thing that we've been able to do is shape our sponsor's message to physicians in the area where these patients are. Now, let me be very clear. We do not know who these patients are. This is de-identified patient data. But we have areas of the country where we know where the centers are, that some of these patients live around. So by better educating physicians, what we hope to achieve is a diagnosis rate of five years, which is the typical rare disease diagnosis rate, should be halved. So again, this is real. It exists today. It isn't easy, but this is some of the technology, AI, and machine learning transformations that are available, not just to the benefit of patients and to life science companies, but also to the payers and providers.